glory one year later 15,000 miles later yes people that's right we took delivery of this beauty September 17th 2022 okay now truth be told had we gone with the black mountain interior we could have had this delivered a lot sooner but instead we waited for the ocean coast to begin production and I'm so glad we did we'll talk about that in a hot second so let's go ahead, let's give this the one year review. Again, it's got 15,000 miles under her belt, under her chassis, if you will. Uh, it has also survived a move from Rhode Island to DC and an expanding family thanks to our newborn Jax. Now let's not waste any more time, let's dive in. What's up YouTubers? It's your girl Shannon from Evie and Chill and life is good. We are loving life back in DC. It is beautiful weather outside, peep that sky. It is PSL season, holla for the basic white girls in the back, that's me. We have still been loving our truck, I'm still married to Mr. Sexy Pants himself, and I've lost a little bit of weight, nine pounds, three ounces to be exact. Yes, that is how much Jack's weighed, people, ouch. But here we are, let's go ahead, let's continue to review this truck, and we're gonna start off with the looks. And quick recap, at the end of summer 2021, we submitted our order for our Rivian in the Red Canyon color with the 21 inch road wheels and tires. Well, people, fast forward just a little bit. J3's favorite color is blue, so we changed our configuration. We chose the Rivian blue and the 20 inch all-terrain wheels and tires. And long story short, people, we love it. It is gorgeous. Now, originally we did order the Ocean Coast interior. For a hot second, we did, we thought about changing it. But as you can see, obviously we kept the Ocean Coast and people, we are still loving it. And as much as we love this truck from the factory, y'all know we had to give it a little sexy Shan flavor. Customize it just a little bit, if you will. So let me show you the little modifications that we made here. We didn't go too crazy, people. People. we really didn't or we haven't yet I don't know do we have something in store maybe we'll see we'll see okay so let me show you what we've done here uh, we did add PPF to the hood and to the front now we love chips and dip but we don't love chips on our paint so this is still looking pretty pristine take a look here it is beautiful now we also added here the yellow tint on the fog lights that's from t wraps i think that just kind of bumps it up a little bit ties in those yellow accent colors speaking of these yellow tow hitch covers they look pretty good although i think we have like a dead bug caught in there do you see that that's nasty uh we're gonna wait till my husband gets home he's gonna take care of that because i don't do bugs uh, okay, moving on, we also tinted the windshield. We like to ride a little dark and dirty sometimes, uh, so that just adds to the dark factor. Now we also, okay, take a look here. We also tinted all the way around. This looks really good. And then we added PPF to the tailgate. Uh, but let me show you something else here. This is probably my favorite modification that we've done. Now we added running boards here. These are from EV Sportline. Uh, they're super helpful because even though the truck has kneel mode, like, you know, it can lower down like as close to the ground as it can, my short little legs still need like a little bit of extra step up, especially when I was prego people, like it was trying to get like a cow into this vehicle. And this vehicle, it can store a lot, uh, but getting up into it was a little bit diff. Okay, now we also added the yellow piping. That did not come with the running boards. We added that separately, but I think we just needed it. I think it adds, again, just a little bit more pop, especially because this is the quad motor configuration. Uh, we need to let everyone know that with the yellow accents here. And hello, I forgot one of the most obvious ones. We also added the crossbars and the two bike racks along with the traction boards here. Uh, we have not had to use the traction boards yet, thankfully. Uh, we'll see what happens this winter. But we have used the bike racks like a few dozen times. And that's probably like, along with the running boards, the other most like functional part of this that we've done. Um, so I'm super glad we got that. Sometimes we keep the crossbars on the bed. Sometimes we put them up on the roof here. Uh, noise wise, it is just a smidge noisier when everything's on the roof. Um, so I do like to keep things 
like on the bed, especially since we have the newborn, we like to keep things as quiet as possible. But again, we are loving how this baby looks. Uh, it's almost like looking in the mirror because the Rivian blue almost matches my blue eyes. Uh, so yes, I love it even more for that reason. And since we're outside, let's talk about something that I've been reading a lot about on forums, and that is the tires. Now, I've read a lot of people say that they're struggling to get even 6,000 miles out of their tires. First of all, I'm here to say, I think that might be clickbait because we're at 15,000 miles, people, and we have plenty of tread left on these tires. Do you see that? Like, get up in there. I don't know, maybe those people are like driving solely on sandpaper because we still have plenty of life left in these tires. I mean, my husband who drives this as his primary vehicle, he is not the most efficient driver if you're picking up what I'm putting down. And again, like the tires are completely fine. So I don't know what those people be talking about. But let's also talk about one other thing because these are the 20 inch all terrains. And this is something I'm thankful for uh, because not that I'm like the worst driver ever, but I'm most definitely not the best. Here's what I love about it. The tires are really beefy and they stick out a little bit further than the wheel does. So I've actually yet to curb the wheels on here. These wheels, they look still brand new. Uh, so I'm super thankful we have just that little bit of like extra lip here because that sticks out. Uh, it has definitely saved this mama quite a few times. And let's touch upon the looks inside the vehicle here. Y'all know we waited so long for that Ocean Coast color. And again, I'm so glad we did. Some of y'all thought we were crazy because we had a toddler at the time uh, and then one on the way. So y'all thought we were crazy for going with such a light color. But we've also had white in our Tesla for like a few years and that's held up really, really well. We're super happy with that. And we're also super happy with the Rivian's Ocean Coast. Like it still looks brand new people. Take a little peep here. It still looks fantastic. I will say just on the driver's seat, there's maybe just some slight wear and you can see like a little bit of creasing here in the leather. Now I'm gonna attribute that to when we didn't have the running boards because I am on the shorter side with shorter legs. When I would get in the vehicle, I would essentially have to like grab onto this side bolster to like scoop my booty in. So again, if you're considering the Rivian, you might as well just consider running boards because you're gonna need them. Unless you're like, I don't know, Yao Ming or Shaq and you're like super duper tall, uh, get the running boards. And with that Ocean Coast interior, I love the contrast that it has with the wood. That's still looking really nice there. Again, I just think it makes it look like a little bit more sophisticated, especially for a truck. Um, so overall, outside, obviously we're happy with that. Inside, we've been very impressed. So at this point, you might be asking, like, if this vehicle is so perfect, have we had any issues with it? And I'd have to say, not really. We did have just that one little, like, small snafu. You might remember when the floor liner got ripped off the Rivian. Uh, yeah, that did happen. Uh, so we did go back and forth with, with Rivian as far as, like, who was responsible for it and what caused it. Ultimately, though, they decided to replace it, and they even delivered it to our house. They covered it all. Um, so that was super awesome. But I think, honestly, that's probably been, like, our only issue with this. So again, thank you, Rivian, for covering that floor liner. But now let's talk about Rivian as a brand. And I think it's been really cool over the past year to like see them come into their own as a brand. Like they were still, you know, a newer company trying to work out some of the kinks, like their deliveries, their service, um, all of that stuff. And initially, I think Rivian like was not a well-known name at all. Like we would go months on the road without seeing another Rivian. Um, but lately, like we've probably seen Rivians like at least once a week on the road. So I think they're like slowly but surely like making themselves a household name, which is really cool and kind of exciting for us personally because I feel like, you know, we were with Rivian from the start. So I feel like we have that special connection now. I guess I kind of feel that way about Tesla too, because not that we were one of the first ones to get a Tesla, but I feel like we were one of like the earlier people when Tesla was still like a newer brand. And again, now, I mean, go outside on the highway, people, you probably see like 40 Teslas. So again, it's been kind of cool as like a customer just to see Rivian kind of evolve and come into their own. Um, and I'm super excited to see what else they have in store. Now it's time in the video to talk about what Rivian can improve upon. And let's make our way to the back end here. Also, take a little peep at Jax. How cute is he? 
Although cardinal rule people never wake a sleeping baby. So we're just gonna let him lay there. The AC is on, he's comfortable. I'm talking to him, lulling him to sleep. Uh, okay, yeah, let's talk about uh, what Rivian can improve upon. And we're gonna talk about uh, this screen right here. Because people, this is a pretty massive screen. Uh, let me move the camera so you can get a closer look. Here's a better view for you here. And you can see people, this screen is pretty big. It's about like the size of my hand here. But all it does is turn the heated seats on and off. And then it just tells you like the temperature that the driver and passengers are set at. And honestly, people, this screen is too big to do just that. Um, so I've heard, hopefully, like I've heard that Rivian is maybe in the works of doing something else. Um, I don't know what that would be. Hopefully there's gonna be an update where maybe it'll have a few more functions, maybe some entertainment options. That would be cool. Just gonna throw that out there. Um, but yeah, so I wish that screen with the size that it is and like its location, I wish it could do more than just the basics. And speaking of more than just the basics, let's talk about the entertainment screen. This is great people. It does a lot of what I need it to do. We haven't had any issues software wise. However, DC fast charging is just a way of life. Like if you're going on a road trip, you're gonna need to stop and charge for a few minutes. So that being said, I wish there were some more entertainment options for us here, kind of like how Tesla does. Uh, so let me play games, Rivian. Let me watch some YouTube, some Netflix. Uh, I will watch myself, uh, you know, God boost my numbers, people. <laughs> um, so yeah, I wish there were just a few more entertainment options here on this main screen. And also since we're up here, I have to say this, I don't know why Rivian didn't do this. Why is there no glove box, people? Nothing. Now, okay, there are options for storage here. We do have this little area here, which can get pretty deep. We just have that tray there. Um, we also have down here on the side, the front area will pop out for more storage. And then we even went as far, people, as we ordered this. This just stores like our extra odds and ends here. This has been super helpful to have in the front. But sometimes maybe it's just like instinct. If you get pulled over or whatever, you reach towards your glove box to get your license and registration, or maybe even just to store napkins in there. So I really do wish there was a glove box. I mean, if you ask a woman like if her closet can ever be too big, the answer would be no. So if you ask me like, can there ever be enough storage in a vehicle? My answer would also be no. And can any improvements be made to the outside of the vehicle? I would say yes. Here's what I request, Rivian. Okay, now I want a little step kind of like built in here, built into the tailgate where I can just put my foot in there and access what is in the back of the truck. Um, maybe kind of how like Ford does it. Now I know a lot of you right now are saying, well, you could simply like get around that by just stepping on the door of the gear tunnel. Like, yes, I could do that, but still you're not able to like access what's in the back here. I'd have to still throw my leg around to like get up in there. So sometimes I do just want to like peek in and grab something, whatever the case may be. Um, so if there was like a built in little step right here, just a small little like nook for me, um, that would be great. At the moment, we've thought of like an ingenious way to kind of like circumvent that. We've added this step here, uh, but when we don't have this on, I really would just like an easy access step. That would be super helpful. And there is like one more thing I wish could be changed up. And that is the plug that is under the back of this screen. And some of y'all didn't even know there was a plug back there because really it's not easy to see. It's not easy to access at all. It is cool that there is a plug there. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Uh, so right under this screen, if I take you under there, you see that plug there? Like that is great. It's fantastic. I've used it a lot, especially even when we're like on the road and I need to breast pump, we use that plug. But again, it's not easy to access. Like a lot of you didn't even know it was there until we like shared it in one of our videos a few months ago. Um, so keep the plug, change the location. And at this point, some of y'all might be thinking like, Shan, those are not like really big issues that you have with the truck. And I'd have to say, you're right. I mean, those are all really minor. We have really been like surprised and impressed by this truck. Like we've thoroughly enjoyed driving this, uh, almost living in it at times because like we're just in it so much. I think if I'm really thinking about it, I'd have to say we've never had a vehicle meet our needs quite like this truck can. And again, the stats are super impressive. 
It can do zero to 60 in three seconds, almost 850 horsepower. Um, it can store everything my family can throw in it. The gear tunnel, okay, I'm gonna talk about that in a second. Um, but again, all the extra storage locations have been great. And let me take a hot second just to talk about the things I love about this vehicle. The first one, the powered frunk. Yes, we've had vehicles with frunks before, but this is a fully powered frunk. You can open it from, of course, inside uh, the cabin, like on the screen, you can use the key fob. Uh, I'm gonna show you the inside, so I'm just gonna push the button right here. But I love that it opens and closes by itself. There's plenty of storage room here. This is actually where I keep my groceries after going shopping. Uh, tons of storage space. Like you could literally fill that up and take like a bubble bath in it. Will I do that? Maybe, that's a good idea. Okay, speaking of storage, also now I'm gonna talk about the gear tunnel. The gear tunnel, there is so much space in here, people. At first, I thought it might be like a little bit gimmicky, but we use this for everything. We keep chairs in here, sports bags, um, cooler, food. Uh, you could even like sleep back there. And let me just tell you, you can fit two people back here, like one on top of the other, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. Okay, moving on. Um, yes, so I love this, but let's move inside the vehicle because I have to talk about the user interface. You guys know that we've had some problems with other vehicles' user interfaces before. Uh, not gonna call them out, but you know who you are, those car companies, yes. Okay, so user interface on the Rivian. We have not had any problems with it whatsoever. Fingers crossed. Um, navigation has worked seamlessly. Um, I love the fact that there are like so many different drive modes here. And I'm not trying to like oversell this here because Tesla people, they still like rule the world when it comes to user interface. But I have to say Rivian is probably like a really close second and they're definitely gaining speed here in this area. Um, I have been very impressed when it comes to like user interface, how responsive everything is. And again, I'm gonna say this, it has not crashed on me once. Uh, I can't say that about other vehicles. And if I feel like blowing the doors off this vehicle, I can simply hit sport mode and the vehicle will lower itself. Um, so that is just super awesome. If I wanna hit the road, I can raise up the truck and it can climb like whatever is in front of us with all of these different modes here. Uh, there you can adjust again the ride height. I just really feel like the way that Rivian like integrated their air suspension, their off-road worthiness, and the usable drive modes that are offered is just like a really seamless experience here. Okay, now there is something I wish Rivian would add right up to the front here, and that would be just a simple access to the frunk button. Like, yes, you can like lock and unlock your vehicle here. If they could just add like a frunk button like here or here, that would be helpful. I mean, of course we can access it here, um, but again, you have to go through like one additional layer. Um, so again, just like a quick access right up here would be fantastic. And I'll take just a second to address the tonneau cover. Some of you guys have even like sent us some DMs about this. We have not had any issues with this baby working. It has not broken, thank goodness. Fingers crossed people, it'll stay that way. Uh, you can see it's still going back people. Um, so again, no issues with that. It's always worked for us every time. Now let's take just a hot second and talk about the elephant in the room. And that's the Cybertruck. What? Yes, okay, you guys remember we put in a reservation for it, but are we really gonna take delivery of it? After owning the Rivian, I don't know. I don't know, people. I have to say, like, this is a premium vehicle and we've been super impressed by it. And I have to say, people, my husband is a very premium man. Uh, I didn't say high maintenance, you said high maintenance. Uh, he likes premium things. Granted, that's why he married me, hello. And he likes this premium vehicle. This really suits him. And this is, again, his primary vehicle. I love driving it too, don't get me wrong. But he's usually the primary driver for this. And he's really become accustomed to like the luxuries that this vehicle offers. Now again, the Cybertruck, it looks really awesome. And honestly, like with all of the angles, it looks like it could be like a fun DIY wrap job. Um, so that is kind of something cool. Like I like to think about that, but that's for like another video. Okay, so, but with the sneak peeks that have been released about the Cybertruck, I have to say, and again, I love Tesla, my Model Y, love it so much. 
but with the sneak peeks that have been released about the Cybertruck, is giving me more like Ikea vibes, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. And I know it's super angular, like that looks really cool, it's really polarizing, but when you look at the inside, it's kind of like Ikea-esque. Like it's just maybe a little too simple, not as luxurious, um, and that's something we've come to really like about this truck. But again, we're not gonna make any final decisions now. We have to really get our hands on the truck. We wanna get inside of it, we wanna see it. Um, I mean, it is simple and straightforward looking, which is kind of cool in one aspect, but on the other hand, like we love the luxury now. So again, no final decisions, like the sneak peeks online have been great, um, but that can't compare to like actually getting in and getting hands on with things. Uh, and I do like to get handsy. So would we buy this truck again after owning it for a year and learning all we've learned? Uh, duh. Yes, of course we would buy this truck again. We, again, obviously you can tell through the course of this video, we've come to really love this truck. Um, there are so many things about it that we really appreciate. Um, I do have just one concern. This is what has really been like probably the make it or break it for us when it comes to the Cybertruck. Because again, the Cybertruck, it's still on our radar. We're not Xing that off the list just yet. Um, I mean, right now, I'd say like we'd probably edge towards keeping the Rivian, but this is the make it or break it people. That is supercharging. So it's no secret that Rivian has partnered with Tesla to use Tesla's supercharging network. I'm super excited about this, but I am super concerned about this because I don't want to be taking up too many spots. Uh, that's kind of like my concern. I mean, the charge port, it is on like the front driver side here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So with the current length of charging cable that superchargers have right now, I would have to wait and take up two spots because their chargers are set to charge Tesla vehicles who have their charge port on the rear driver's side. So that's my worry. And I'm sure Rivian is aware of this. I'm sure they're thinking of some sort of like mitigation or solution for this. I mean, one solution could just be to make like a longer adapter. It could be that simple people. Um, but that's really like my only concern. That's the make it or break it factor for us right now because everything else, like this truck is like a Swiss army knife and it does everything else so well. And if you were to build the truck as it is today, it would cost $99,000. Say what? Yes, that's a lot of dinero as JLo would say. But is it worth it? After owning it for a year, after driving it, I would have to say hands down, yes, it is worth it. Uh, probably worth every dime or every penny. It is just built with premium materials and people, everything on it works. That is like probably the highlight of everything. It just works. We've not had any issues with it. And that to me is what makes it worth its money. Okay, and real quickly, just touching upon the Cybertruck one more time. I feel like, again, $99,000 for this truck, you're getting luxury. The Cybertruck, we'll see what like the finalized price point is. But to me, the Cybertruck just kind of looks more like it's geared towards like economy. Does that make sense? Like it's more of like an economy truck. This is kind of like in a different echelon here with the Rivian. But there you have it. This is my one year review on the Rivian. Obviously, I don't need to say it again. We really liked having this vehicle. And this Rivian and my Tesla Model Y, they're the two vehicles that we've owned the longest. Like my husband and I, we've been married for 10 years. We've gone through 13 vehicles and the Model Y and the R1T, these are vehicles like we are not in a hurry to get rid of. I don't wanna trade these vehicles in for a long time. I mean, unless something better comes down the road, like literally if it drives by me and I like it more. Okay, but that is it people. That is my one year review. These are my thoughts on the truck. If there's anything I missed, drop it in the comments below. Slide into my DMs on Twitter. Oh wait. X, slide into me on X uh, or Instagram. Also, if you're thinking about buying a Tesla, don't forget to use my referral code. You can find that in the bottom there. Well, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.